all welcome to Box Office Studio today. I'm going to recap one of the best comedy parody movie. Okay, then let's get start. Rick Riker, a clumsy teenager, struggles to board the bus without colliding with the doors. His affection for Jill Johnson, his classmate and neighbor, is immense, but she is already in a relationship and hardly acknowledges his existence. While on a school trip, Rick's best friend Trey advises him to let go of his feelings for Jill as she only associates with the popular group and rarely interacts with anyone else. The students soon arrive at the amalgamated genetics lab, which houses various genetically modified animals. Rick notices Jill admiring a magnificent bird and offers to capture a photo of it for the school newspaper. Dr. Strom, the head of the research department, warns Rick against using flash photography as it may harm the light-sensitive creatures, but Rick fails to pay attention. The bird unexpectedly bursts into flames and plummets to the ground moments after Rick takes the picture. In a bid to extinguish the flames, Rick stomps on the burning bird only to have it stick to his shoe. He hastily kicks it away, unintentionally striking Jill's boyfriend Lance Landers. However, before Lance can retaliate, his uncle, Lou Landers, intervenes and prevents any violence. Dr. Strum introduces Lou as the visionary CEO of the company. Some time later, Rick notices Lou coughing up blood and expresses concern for his well-being. Lou, recognizing Rick as the son of Blaine and Julia Riker, inquires about his parents' current status. Rick sadly informs him that they tragically passed away nine years prior. As Lou departs, Lance forcefully thrusts Rick into an animal enclosure, causing him to land in a pile of excrement. Desperate to clean himself, Rick grabs a bottle labeled H2O only to discover that it contains a substance known as H2O9 instead of water. Dr. Strum explains to the class that H2O9 is a potent aphrodisiac capable of attracting any animal. Before long, the animals in the lab become drawn to Rick and relentlessly swarm him. Dr. Strum then presents a tank housing genetically enhanced dragonflies, noting that there should be seven, although Jill can only spot six. The seventh dragonfly soon emerges and bites Rick on the neck. In his panicked state, Rick accidentally knocks over a shelf, causing more H2O9 to spill onto himself just as Dr. Strom opens the gate, inadvertently allowing more animals to enter the lab. Overwhelmed by the irresistible effects of the aphrodisiac, Rick becomes inundated with various creatures. Later, the school informs Rick's Aunt Lucille that her nephew has wandered off during the field trip. Shortly thereafter, Rick stumbles into his house, visibly unwell due to the dragonfly bite. He collapses onto his bed while his uncle Albert offers advice on navigating through puberty. At the amalgamated headquarters, Lou discloses to his business partners that he has a terminal illness and has only one hour left to live. In a desperate attempt to prolong his life, he plans to utilize an invention that can manipulate DNA and restore his body to perfect health. Dr. Strom expresses concerns about the untested nature of the machine, but Lou remains adamant about proceeding. Shortly after activating the device, it begins altering Lou's genes, which causes it to malfunction and ultimately explode due to overheating. Carlson, one of Lou's business partners, assumes that the machine has failed and claims he will gladly take over the company once Lou is gone. However, when Lou grasps Carlson's hand, it seems as though Carlson's life force transfers to Lou instead. In a matter of moments, Carlson ages rapidly and perishes. Lou then disengages from the machine and instructs his partners to make necessary personnel changes. Strum lets out a piercing scream as he witnesses Lou extracting the life force from his remaining colleagues in business. After being unconscious for a duration of five days, Rick awakens and discovers that the dragonfly bite has fully healed. While conducting research on the bite's effects online, someone using the username ProFX5016 contacts him and asserts that they hold the answers. The unidentified individual advises Rick not to seek them out as they will come to him. Following the commencement of the science fair at Rick's school, the principal announces that Stephen Hawking will join the university as a visiting professor and conduct experiments on a rare element named Cerulean. Hawking mentions his melancholy due to his disability and invites the students to engage in recreational drug use with him, but none display any interest. 
As Rick attempts to drink from the water fountain, his hands become adhered to the ceramic surface. When he pulls his hand away, he observes the growth of hair on his palm. He endeavors to detach his other hand from the fountain, but it forcefully disconnects from the wall and unintentionally strikes Lance in the back of his head while remaining attached to Rick's hand. Lance attempts to retaliate by striking Rick, but Rick skillfully evades his punches. However, Rick fails to evade a third blow due to his lack of attention. While attempting to escape from Lance, Rick's hands become stuck to the chest of the principal when he collides with her. As he pulls away, he collides with Hawking, who subsequently crashes into a beehive. Later in the day, Rick becomes aware of his newly acquired abilities and decides to test them by scaling a wall and demonstrating his breakdancing skills. Suddenly, he spots an elderly woman on the brink of being struck by a swiftly moving truck and he promptly pushes her out of harm's way. The truck collides with Rick, yet he emerges unharmed, not a scratch in sight. Onlookers commend him as a hero despite the unfortunate occurrence of the woman he saved being crushed by a tree removal machine. Upon arriving home, Rick divulges to Albert and Trey that he appears to possess superhuman powers. He speculates that his skin may have transformed into an armored state due to the dragonfly's bite as the insect possesses a resilient exoskeleton. Albert expresses skepticism and proceeds to test Rick's hypothesis by thrusting a knife into his flesh. Both Albert and Trey become convinced when the knife becomes distorted while Rick remains completely unharmed. Encouraged by Trey and Albert, Rick ponders the idea of using his abilities to attain fame and wealth, but he emphasizes that he simply wishes to live life as an ordinary young person. Albert reminds him that this contradicts his late father's desires for his future. Rick retreats to his room and reminisces about the night he accompanied his parents to the opera during his childhood. After the performance, Blaine noticed that young Rick appeared perturbed by the portrayal of injustice in the show and assured his son that he would rectify such matters in the future, becoming the hero people expected him to be. Suddenly, a mugger accosted them at gunpoint, demanding their valuables. In the midst of the altercation, Rick decided to take a stand and fight the assailant. As they grappled to gain control of the firearm, the weapon discharged and struck Blaine and Julia. A second bullet hit a nearby streetlight, causing it to fall onto Julia's head. The mugger fled upon witnessing Blaine and Julia lying injured on the ground. Aware of his impending demise, Blaine disclosed to Rick that Albert would care for him and inherit his assets. Blaine advised Rick to sell his shares in Google, dismissing them as worthless, and urged him to heavily invest in Enron. He then bequeathed Rick the family ring and expressed that it was his destined duty to be a hero. While standing outside the house, Rick overhears Jill engaged in an argument with her mother. Moments later, Jill emerges and confides in Rick about the challenges she is facing as her parents insist she attends college despite her aspirations of becoming a dancer. Upon voicing his support for her, Jill remarks that Rick is more supportive than her current boyfriend. She acknowledges that Lance may not be the suitable man for her as she is starting to believe that she is merely dating him to defy her father. Lance then appears in a lavish car to collect Jill. Before departing, Jill requests Rick to take her for a ride in his car at some point. Later that night, Rick goes online to search for an economical car. Unexpectedly, a video from Professor Xavier emerges on the screen advising him to undergo a training program to master his abilities. The following day, Rick accompanies Albert and Lucille to the bank to apply for a car loan. Lucille accompanies him inside while Albert waits in the car. The loan officer promptly rejects Rick's application. Rick pleads with him, emphasizing that he genuinely needs a car. However, Thompson emphasizes that it is not his concern. When a man robs the bank, Rick assists him in escaping by opening the door for him. Thompson berates him for allowing the man to get away, prompting Rick to inform him that it is not his problem. Suddenly, Rick hears two gunshots outside. He soon discovers that the robber shot his uncle, but miraculously, he survived. That night, Lou's vital signs suddenly plummet while he is monitoring them, leading him to absorb his secretary's life force. While Rick keeps watch over Albert at the hospital, Jill visits to offer him consolation. Rick blames himself for Albert getting shot as he failed to stop the robber. 
He believes he is a failure, but Jill reminds him that his uncle believes in him and asserts that it is never too late to become the person he aspires to be. As he leaves the hospital, Xavier approaches Rick and takes him on a tour of the school for gifted individuals. Xavier explains that he established the school to assist people in controlling their powers and utilizing them for good. The professor tells Rick that he has the potential to become the greatest superhero, although Rick points out that he cannot even fly. Xavier assures him that he will learn to do so once he comprehends the true essence of heroism. Mrs. Xavier interrupts their tour, berating her husband for having an affair with Invisible Girl. After physically assaulting Invisible Girl, Mrs. Xavier continues to rap. Rick is disheartened that Xavier cannot teach him the secret to becoming a superhero. Mrs. Xavier then hits him on the head and instructs him to simply create his own costume. Shortly after crafting his dragonfly costume, Rick perches atop a tall building. He leaps off in an attempt to fly but ends up crashing into a gargoyle statue. Despite his inability to fly, Rick gains fame as the dragonfly by performing extraordinary acts of heroism throughout the city. At the amalgamated office, Strom informs Lou that he must kill every day to survive. He reveals that Lou can avoid this by acquiring Cerulean, a rare element. After reading a news article about Hawking experimenting with Cerulean, Lou plans to steal the precious substance from the university's laboratory. Rick discovers that the local newspaper is offering money for pictures of the dragonfly, so he applies as the photographer. During the interview, he learns about a police standoff at the university, prompting him to immediately investigate the situation. Donning a suit of armor and adopting the persona of the hourglass, Lou successfully steals the cerulean from the lab. When the dragonfly arrives, he swiftly incapacitates the hourglass by slamming him into the wall. However, the hourglass manages to wound the dragonfly by launching three titanium blades at him. The hourglass then escapes by creating a hole in the wall. While tending to his wounds at home, Trey points out that Rick must be vulnerable to titanium blades. Trey proposes to be Rick's partner, but Rick argues that he doesn't require assistance. Lucille observes Rick gazing at Jill through the window and cautions him about the dangers of being involved with the dragonfly as enemies could target his loved ones. That evening, Rick meets Jill outside a theater after her audition for a play. He wants to reveal his true identity as the dragonfly but remembers Lucille's advice to keep it a secret. As Jill walks home alone, thugs pursue her into an alley. Just as they are about to attack, the dragonfly emerges and fights them off. Jill watches with adoration as he forcefully slams a man's head against the wall, displaying his prowess by ruthlessly breaking another thug's arm. After defeating all the assailants, Jill rewards the dragonfly with a passionate kiss for saving her. In the meantime, Lou discovers a path to immortality through the murder of thousands of people. On Thanksgiving, Jill spends time at Lucille's house where they prepare a turkey. Lance arrives and informs Jill that he invited Lou. Lou Rick returns home still in his dragonfly costume. Lou visits Rick's room to check on him while Lucille is occupied and Rick hides from sight by clinging to the ceiling. When Lou returns to the dining room, Rick re-enters the house wearing casual attire. During dinner, Lou and Rick notice each other's injuries and quickly make excuses to conceal their true identities. Before they can even start eating, Lou informs Lance that they need to depart. Later, Rick confesses his love for Jill while Lucille sleeps on the couch, exhibiting uncontrollable flatulence. As they are about to kiss, despite the unpleasant odor, they are interrupted by Lou's return to the house as the hourglass. Rick attempts to defend himself by throwing a metal ball, but it rebounds and hits him in the head. The hourglass proceeds to attack Lucille while Rick lies unconscious. Rick later visits the hospital to check on Lucille, where he learns that she has passed away. The doctor advises Rick not to deliver any bad news to Albert as it could cause him to regress into a coma. However, when entering the room, the doctor casually mentions Lucille's death. After giving Lucille a proper burial, Rick confesses to Jill that he is not in love with her because their relationship would put her life in jeopardy. Rick becomes depressed and ceases his heroic acts. Trey reminds him that the hourglass plans to kill thousands of people, but Rick argues that he cannot be a hero as he failed to save Lucille and even lacks the ability to fly. 
Albert points out that Rick may falter as a hero, but the intention behind the actions is what truly matters. After convincing Rick to embrace being a superhero again, the trio realizes that the hourglass intends to strike the Empire City Convention Center, where a multitude of people will gather for the World Humanity Awards. Albert drives Trey and Rick to the venue, but they remain unaware of the hourglass's true identity. Meanwhile, Lou arrives at the convention center accompanied by Lance and Jill. Later, Rick unknowingly asks Lou for assistance, not suspecting that he is the hourglass. Lou fabricates a story about the Dalai Lama holding a container of cerulean. Rick dons his dragonfly attire and attacks the Dalai Lama as he is about to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. Suspecting that the Dalai Lama conceals a deep blue hue beneath his garment, the dragonfly exposes his nakedness. A brawl ignites within the conference center as the dragonfly fends off the security team attempting to apprehend him. Swiftly, Lu transforms into his costume and escapes into the adjacent exhibition hall, grasping the Azure artifact. Pursuing him, the dragonfly realizes he has entered HeroCon, an event where attendees emulate their beloved heroes and villains. Desperate to evade capture, the hourglass detonates the ceiling, which lands upon the dragonfly. When the hourglass hurls a razor-sharp titanium blade at him, Jill bravely steps up to shield him, suffering a painful blow to her abdomen. Cradling Jill in his arms, the dragonfly ascends to the rooftop to confront the hourglass, who is already sapping the life force from convention-goers. As he arrives, the dragonfly seizes the hourglass's arm, channeling some energy to revive Jill. Gradually regaining consciousness, Jill discovers that the hourglass is mere moments away from achieving immortality. In a desperate act, the hourglass tosses a bomb affixed with a suction cup at the dragonfly. Struggling to remove it, the bomb inadvertently sticks to his groin, causing the dragonfly to execute a backward somersault, positioning the bomb in front of the hourglass. Although the explosion occurs, the dragonfly survives but soon learns that Jill has fallen from the building. Hastily descending to follow her, Jill notices his familial ring and realizes that he is Rick. Professing that she no longer fears death as long as she is in Rick's embrace, they share a passionate kiss. Miraculously, wings emerge from the dragonfly's back, allowing them to soar back to the rooftop. Later, Rick ascends into the sky alongside Jill, pledging to forever be a superhero in the face of crime and injustice. As they revel in the cityscape, an unforeseen helicopter collides with them. If you've enjoyed the movie and want to stay updated on more captivating recaps, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and thank you for being a part of our movie recap community.